promised, right on time, Larry Kudlow, top White House economic advisor. Larry, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you again. Um, we've got a rip-roaring rally going on here. Part of the reason, I suspect, is this next stimulus package which you're putting together. Can you be specific and tell us what we're likely to see? Well, I don't know that I can be totally specific. Uh, we're looking at a lot of things. It's pre-decisional. Formal talks haven't really begun. But look, certain things the president has said, uh, for example, he wants a payroll tax holiday. That would give about a 6.5% increase to uh, after-tax wages for people either going back to work or have been working uh, all the time. We'd like to see some unemployment reforms. We like uh, uh, return-to-work type uh, bonuses of a modest nature. We don't want to give people disincentives not to work. Uh, there may be extensions to PPP. That's to be decided. Uh, there may be some targeted, directed uh, assistance from uh, direct mail checks to individuals and families. That hasn't been decided yet. There may be a capital gains holiday. There are a number of items that we've talked about publicly and the president has mentioned. So at the moment, that's kind of the uh, grab bag. But we're going to get something. I mean, there is going to be a new package. You've got to agree with the Democrats. I understand all of that. But we're going to get something. You're going to say that conclusively. We're going to get something. Uh, I will. I'll say that conclusively. I, I think you know, as you read the reports and talk to people on both sides of the aisle on the Hill, it is increasingly clear that there will be an additional package. And um, again, we'll try to make it targeted. We'll try to incentivize not just work, although work is crucial in going back to work. Uh, we want to incentivize investments. We want a pro-growth package that will not only get us through this year, uh, even with a V-shaped recovery and a strong second half of 20 percent growth, we want to go forward into 2021, make it a big bang year. So yes, I think it's safe to say at this point, all sides agree there will be a package. Can we get the economy really rolling again if the schools are still closed or only taking a limited number of students for a limited number of days? I, I, in my opinion, one of the most important issues here, if not the most important, of getting the economy going is getting back to school. What do you say? Well, I agree with that, Stuart. I absolutely agree. So does the president, as you know. Uh, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos talked about it on the Sunday shows. We, we all agree kids need to be in school. Kids staying home do a lot of harm and damage to the kids. I think interpersonal teaching is the best way to do it. Uh, social reacting is very important. And of course, you don't want them to miss a, another school year or a school year, which would set them back in terms of their actual learning process. Um, Parents will have a hard time. Single moms will have a hard time if they're home. Uh, uh, two working parent families will have a difficult time. There are a million reasons why we need to go back to school. And I want to say, the uh, president has said that he is willing to consider additional aid, you know, talking yeah. about the next care package, in order to help reopen the schools. And I think as long as we observe, look, you've got basic, four basic guidelines here that need to be met, right? The masking, the distancing, the personal hygiene and the testing. Now, geography, spacing of desks, uh, whether you break the school day up into four hours or six hours or whatever, I'm not an expert, we could figure this out. But crucially, you are right. Uh, if we don't reopen the schools, K through 12 especially, but I would also add some of these fancy colleges that ought to stay open. Nonetheless, that would be a setback to uh, true economic recovery. So let's not go there. Let's use some American ingenuity and some common sense and get the schools open. Does the increase in cases that we have seen in some of the hot spots around the country, does that slow down the pace of economic recovery? Well, it's a tough question and it's a worrisome question. So, you know, you're spot on in raising it. We are scouring all the numbers right now, Stu, and I would say to you, the V-shaped recovery is still intact according to the latest numbers. In fact, we just pulled one out this morning. Uh, my economics deputy, Joe Lavornia, found this. Job postings, all right, in the country nationwide as well as the hotspots from the Indeed uh, website. It's a recruiting website. Anyway, job postings are going up, and that's a very promising sign. That includes uh, places like Texas. Now, other stuff is intact. There's a housing boom going on. There's a retailing boom going on. There's a consumer confidence boom going on. 
The employment numbers have gone up 8 million, as you know, the last couple of months. The initial claims and the continuing claims are coming down, I think, 14 straight weeks for initial claims. Uh, small businesses are open about 80%, uh, and new business applications are also uh, very, very strong. So I'm, I'm just saying I'm worried. I, I grant you that. I don't like to see the cases. That's a, a tough sign. On the other hand, we know what to do using the same guidelines I mentioned before. We know how to flatten these curves. I do believe they're going to be temporary, but we are looking at every single number imaginable to figure the story out and see what impact it has on the congressional talks. Okay. Uh, China is sanctioning Senators Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio. Is that going to get in the middle of our relationship with China, the two biggest economies in the world going at it on various issues? Real problem, do you think? Well, good luck with those sanctions. I, I haven't talked to either Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio, but um, look, the China story is a very complex and difficult story. The president is not in a good mood about China, nor is anybody in the administration. Okay? The China flu, uh, call it what you may. They were never transparent. They're still hiding facts and figures. They wouldn't let folks in. The consequences of that in the U.S. and around the world are probably gigantic. All right. We're also very concerned about the Hong Kong story. As you know, we have put our own sanctions on many of these Hong Kong leaders and human rights sanctions uh, for the Uyghur problem. Uh, and perhaps more of the same, China will be held accountable. Now, having said all that, we are still engaging on the phase one trade deal. I think that's an important point. We are still engaging there. China says they will implement their side of the deal. Uh, let's take a look and see. I hope that is correct. But the relationship with China on national security grounds, uh, by the way, on investor protection and fraud grounds, that's another issue that's coming up. We don't want the thrift savings plan to be used. Uh, Robert O'Brien and I wrote a letter. We just wrote another one to the Railroad Retirement Fund. We think uh, on national security grounds and uh, investor protection fraud grounds, we have to take a hard look at all the China companies that are uh, publicly okay. listed. I'm not coming down on any side on this except to issue that warning, which the SEC and the Public Accounting Board has issued warnings. Got it. Duly noted. Larry Kudlow, thanks for joining us, sir. I'm sure we'll see you.